you've been sitting on your butt, feeling like a weenie, but now it's 5.30, it's time for our martini, welcome to our show, welcome to our kiki, the 5.30 quarantini. Hello. hello! Oh my god, you beat me to the hello today, how's it I going? I tried, that was my goal for the day, and I did it. I beat you, you to the hello. Nailed it. Hi, hello. Okay. Happy, Hi, Michael. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Happy hour. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been a hot minute. We have not been here since Thursday. Since we took, Thursday. We took a long weekend, but I'm happy to be back. Absolutely. Yes. And Especially what Especially with our guests. episode today. we have today. I know. A favorite guest, a favorite drink. Mm-hmm. I, it's going to be a good day here on the Quarantini. Hi, guys. I see people starting to trickle in. Uh, if you are joining us today, welcome to the Quarantini. Uh, drop a comment so we know you're here and we can show you a little bit of love and uh, get you involved today. Dylan, how was your holiday weekend? Yes. My holiday weekend was great. Um, <laughs> Very you know, descriptive. Just... Good, good. <laughs> it was great. It was great. I mean, we, we've talked about it. We were together. We were sheltered in place together we um, this weekend. And it was it was a blast. We didn't see anybody and we were just kind of in the woods. It was nice. We love a wooded weekend. We love a wooded weekend. Um, but yes, it was it was fun. I'm yeah. Did you back. have fun? I had so much fun. Okay, good. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, and uh, it feels weird to be back in Manhattan. It, it went by rather we, quick we came back last night and i we, i just kind of like looked around the apartment and i was like okay and i just like got into bed and i was like mm, you got, i did not get into bed i got home last night and i had priorities i caught up on drag race and i okay. watched the hamilton movie which i we have so much to talk about but we're gonna we wait until so our guest gets in to talk about that but i lived my best life last night catching that up is on like a good four and a half yeah. ish hours of oh, things to do. It no, was an I, excellent. I caught up content. with my Real Housewives of New York and I went to bed. Well, you know, different <laughs> different strokes for different folks. Yeah. I was living my little gay boy fantasies last night. Well, I watched the Hamilton movie the first thing I did when I woke up on Friday before we mm, left. You beat me to it. I didn't get to I, see it before we left. Oh yeah, I watched. I started at like eight a.m. when I got up. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. Well, speaking of Hamilton movie. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and speaking of, not speaking of this, but I was thinking about how thirsty I am. What do you say we get going and introduce today's special guest? Bring it. All right, you guys. Today's guest bartender stars as Angelica in the national tour of the Smash Hit, in the Angelica tour, named after her. Named after uh, her, exactly. Specifically her. Uh, in the Smash Hit musical, Hamilton. She's also starred on Broadway in Ragtime, Falsettos. There's one heck of a story that we're going to get to. And Junk. We are in good company today because she's also going to make one of Dylan and my favorite cocktails. Let's take a look at today's special guest. You know, Stephanie Umo. down memory lane you guys girl I, spent, I had so much fun stalking you on youtube today how are you hi <laughs> hi guys good to see your faces oh my gosh you too it's so nice to see you where are you coming to us uh, from today well currently i am in uh vermont in a place called smuggler's notch which i guess back in like the 1800s literally smugglers would like 
smuggle stuff through the mountains here. So it's so cute. I know, right? Oh my God, I'm obsessed with that. Um, I am, I'm a skier. I've been skiing since I was three and I have okay. not been to Smuggler's Notch since, I learned to ski at Smuggler's Notch, but I only was there like two winters. So I was like three and four years old. So I don't remember it, but I know that I learned to ski in Smuggler's Notch. Michael, you learn to ski at three or four years old. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They teach them young. They teach them young. They sure <laughs> do. Um, have you, and so uh, you were on the Hamilton tour when this all happened. Yes. And have you been, have you been in Vermont? Have you been moving around? How, how, how are you? How is quarantine? How's it going? Oh my God. Okay. So this, it all feels like a dream because I've been moving around a lot, but we were in uh, Miami on the tour when everything came to a screeching halt. And so, you know, we were like, my boyfriend and I were like, can we stay in Miami? But people were still partying naked. So we were like, we should probably go. Yeah. Um, and you know, is at the time we, no one had an, any idea about the, the virus. So we, uh, picked a spot on the map and we went to Asheville, North Carolina, which is also in the mountains. Right. And we found this adorable little house and we rented it for three months. And yeah, we just, we're mountain dwellers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were right. just doing the mountain thing. And, um, and then we just were like, okay, as things started to die down a little bit, we headed back up Northeast. So yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's wild. Also, the mm -hmm. fact that you just dropped the words three months. I'm like, my God, we've been here forever. And yes, we have, Michael. So long. It's, so long. it's wild. Um, well, I am. I'm just so happy to see your face. It's been a hot minute. We have yeah. so much to catch up on. But before we do that, uh, we need to dive into today's cocktail of the day. Uh, what What are we making today? We are going to be making a classic Manhattan. Yes, Manhattan's are one of my favorite drinks, but I, especially when I'm away from New York, I like to, to sit at a bar and drink one and think about that good old city of ours. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Amazing. Yeah, uh, and sure. just, so just to make sure that Dylan and I have everything we need, uh, before we start making, will you just run down the ingredients so Dylan and I are sure that we are ready? Sure. So you're definitely going to need ice. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going to need, um, I prefer uh, a rye bourbon, but uh, that's up to you. Uh -huh. um, or a rye, a rye whiskey, sorry. Um, you can also use regular bourbon, you know, whatever you have on hand. Um, you're going to need some aromatic bitters. Okay. Got and then um, you're going to need some sweet vermouth. Mm -hmm. And then also some uh, maraschino cherries. If you Perfect. Will. Done. Nailed it. All right. I'm, I'm good. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. So. I think we've all, do, Michael, do you have bullet rye? No, I ruined it. I've got bourbon. <sighs> That's but okay. It'll be a little sweeter. Fine. The rye makes it a little spicy. That's, I like it a little yeah. sweeter. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing a little bourbon today. <laughs> okay. So would you like me to walk you through how to make it or do you, you got it? No. Yes, no. please. Tell us. Let's, uh, let's fo we'll follow your lead. Okay. So first you're going to take your sugar or whatever you have and uh, drop some ice in there. Okay. Then, after you got a few ice cubes in there, you're going to open up your bry, and then you're going to get, uh, I'd say two ounces, but if you want to make it a little stronger, you know, cheat a little bit. Mine's uh, going to be three, I've just decided. Yeah, mine's going to be two. <laughs> because who likes a drink that's strict to uh, measurements, right? Right, of course, of course. Okay, so after that, grab your sweet vermouth, and then you're going to do one ounce of sweet vermouth. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. If you if you went to three ounces, you're probably gonna want to do like it's like a little more uh You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, next, you're gonna grab your bitters mm -hmm. and just give it. Uh, I'd say two two shakes. You know, in there like that. Now done. Okay. You got it. You got it. As we'll also use orange bitters a little bit. But that, I don't. We, we're not that fancy over here. <laughs> it's, it's a pan, it's a double pandemic. We're working with what we got. Yes. Okay. And then you're gonna stir it around. Okay. And I feel like you know for ten seconds or so. Mm -hmm. You want to get it nice and mixed up. Yeah. If you ever have, go to a bar and someone takes your Manhattan, it's called. Oh. 
I have to say I'm a little embarrassed because I was fully prepared to shake, but I just I just learned something. I heard the reason why is so um, you want to just blend the, the the liqueur with the with the bourbon and not mm. with the ice. You know yeah, I mean? not let her water it down, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So next, I'm gonna grab a maraschino cherry. Oh, I almost forgot. Okay. And I'm gonna say go ahead and plop that in your glass. Okay. Okay. <laughs> plop. Yep. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this drink. I know. Me too. I, I haven't had. I've not been doing bourbon really in quarantine. And yeah. Dylan, it's been it's been a hot minute since we did a bourbon drink on the show. Yeah, that's why when she said it, I was like, done and done. <laughs> All right. I know. Um, I haven't because it's so sweet, you know, and yeah. So of course you have a coupe glass, which is exactly right. I don't. I have a flat glass and a martini glass. Works it's well. all good. And then we're just gonna pour it on in there. Oh Ooh. my god, that looks so good. Perfect. Yes. Work. And that is a Manhattan, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it Cheers. is. Cheers. Thank you for Cheers. joining yeah. us. And I cannot wait to sip this. Cheers, Dylan. Thank you. Mm. I'm so mm. glad we're doing this. Oh my mm. god, that's so good. Oh, that is just what I needed today. Welcome back to the quarantini. We're coming in hot with a Manhattan. Hey. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. All right, <laughs> cheers, you guys. Cheers. Um, so but going back uh, to the Hamilton movie, which I just watched last night, which first of all, let me just say, um, Renee Lee Goldsberry is unbelievable. However, I mean, I'm obsessed with her. Let's just be honest. But knowing that I was seeing you today and watching the show just made me so like desperate to see you do the show. Oh. Like watch. I was like, oh, my God. Um, so I can't wait. You know, these well, shows, I, they'll be back. And when they are, yes. you're on my you're on my wish list now. Yeah. We got to find exciting. out where that tour is going first. Yes. We have and to find we will out. be there. We will be there. I'm not I missing that. that. I love the role so much. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of those roles that I was like, oh, we fit nicely together, um, vocally and also just, um, you know, I'm at, I'm in my thirties now, so I'm I feel really like grounded finally mm -hmm. in my thirties, and I feel grounded in this role. So it's been um it's been a really interesting ride, and I've just been learning a lot about myself. And you know, even though Angelica comes in um, in, in bits and pieces in the show it's uh, mm. it's still one of the hardest shows i've ever done even harder than you know the, than ragtime or something and that's yeah, hard yeah. my boyfriend has not yet had the honor of seeing it live and so he was watching it with me for the first time last night and he was watching and he was like does anybody ever stop and i was like no no they don't and he was like no. i had no idea that this was like he was like i feel like every time I, uh, <laughs> the first time that um What's his name makes the his second entrance now as as uh, Jefferson? Oh sure, oh um, right, uh, 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 David. Uh, as soon as David makes a second, he yeah. was like, Christopher was like, no, they're not playing second characters. Are you serious? And I was like, yep, <laughs> yep, here we go. Oh yeah, they are. Yes, a lot of characters and a lot of randomly just coming on to the to the to the upper part of the set and doing like hand choreography. Yeah. Which, you know what? Takes a little more energy than you would think. <laughs> I know. Well, one of my favorite parts of whenever I saw Hamilton, it was always like, I have such, like, not like I can just get stuck on like a certain person. And like when you're watching the show, there's so much going on that like you just have nothing to do but just be like in the show and watching every little thing that's happening. And like Andy Blank of the Andy Blankenbuehler's choreography for the show is still, and will probably forever be like one of my favorite things that's ever happened. Yeah. I completely agree with you. The way the storytelling, the way the ensemble, the dancers are lending to the story and like moving, you know, furthering the plot with their dancing. It's just, Correct. it's truly brilliant. It's yeah. actually brilliant. And they work so hard and I'm just in mm -hmm. awe of it. How long had you been out on the t uh, out on the tour for before this all happened? Let's see. Um, so I think I, I joined them in like November 2018. Woo! So <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been so, a minute. Oh, wait, so yeah. you've been out that long? I've been out that long. You know, it's just like I, you know, touring. Of course, it's 
freaking exhausting, but um, I've just, I like the bank account. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I get that. You I know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I just, yeah. And I just, again, like the role is, I think I have um, enough breaks where I'm not, con you know, completely, utterly exhausted. I think Eliza is, oh my gosh, I mean, vocally and everything, she just works so much harder than, I think vocally than anybody else in the show. She's just mm -hmm. constantly singing. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so I, I, you know, I'm like, you know what, why not stay here? And I'm actually glad I did, because I have a job to go back to. Yeah, after which is awesome. Well, yeah. you definitely, you're missed here because, Dylan, I don't know if you know this, but Stephanie used to be one of my favorite people to bump into on Ninth oh. Avenue. It was time. like we used to always find each other. It was such a lovely surprise, but that, that doesn't happen no more. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. You guys, I'm so sorry. We had a brief technical glitch earlier. We were not getting comments, but they are now coming in. Uh, so if you are here, apologies if we missed your comment. Uh, but I see them coming in now. Joy is letting us know that uh, she got her mom a fire stick so she can watch Hamilton on her TV, which I also did. My mother called me and said, I need I need Disney Plus. I don't even know what that is. Send her yeah. a fire stick. She's all she's all set up. Set up. Did you give her your login and everything? You what know what? You I know? didn't because my Disney Plus account is already full. I'm already on a seven person plan. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, the funny thing that happened with Disney Plus was I had my own account, and then we are in a group message because we all went on this Disney cruise a few years ago, uh -huh. and in this group message we were talking and, and we're about Disney Plus coming out, and I was like. I was like, it's great. And then Michael found out that you can have up to seven people on your family plan. And if you buy a year subscription, it's only $70. Wait, seriously? Yeah. So just like find a family. So like, we, So we became a family. So we there became you go. a family. <laughs> find a family. So find I love a family. That. Yeah, it's, oh, wow. it's, it's, uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure we talk about today, because it is... Uh, it is something that you are rather well known now for here in New York, oh especially oh. in the Broadway community, um, <laughs> is that you are the superhero that that uh, was covered by Playbill and Broadway World and everywhere else under the sun who stepped into falsettos on Broadway for mm. Tony Award winner Stephanie J. Block uh, with basically no rehearsal. No rehearsal. I am... <laughs> It was, it was, I like, want, I want to hear Stephanie's story. I want it, to hear this. It was the Playbill article heard around the world. <laughs> People were gagged for this. But so you did, you were, you know, in falsettos on Broadway here, which was what, 20? Mm -hmm. That was probably right before you left for the tour. Yeah, I think it was actually 2016 because Trump got, Trump got uh, elected that year. Oh, ah, um, yes. 2016. Yeah, into 17. Amazing. And then Covering. Covering Betsy Wolf and Tracy Toms. Yes, correct. Amazing. And so I'll tell you the story. If you want to hear Please. it? Please. Okay. <laughs> um, so when I was auditioning for the show, I was just um, auditioning to, uh, to cover um, who they're called the lesbians from next door. So I'll mm -hmm. just refer to them as the lesbian, but I hope that's not a sense of thing to say one. But it's because that's that was the, their literal title in the show. So. I was supposed to cover the lesbian from next door. And uh, and so that was it. And then I, I started the I started the show, we started rehearsals and uh, they were like, oh, by the way, you're also gonna be covering Trina. And I was like, okay, that's weird. I didn't even audition for her, but mm -hmm. okay, fine. So we get to rehearsals and you know, the, you know how Broadway's on this trend right now where um, they start the covers uh, at tech instead of at the beginning of rehearsals. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's weird. And I, I just, I, I sometimes, I understand what they're trying to save money, but at the same time, it's like, right. that, we're that much farther behind, you know? So, right. um, so for anybody who doesn't know what that means, basically the the actors who are playing the roles primarily learn the show in rehearsal and then get to open the show. But then the people, the actors that will cover the role and play it when that actor is unavailable doesn't even start getting to learn that role until the show's already open. That's right. Right. So you were you were busy learning, or no, you weren't busy learning anything yet. You you no. were mm -hmm. you were waiting in the wings, waiting for your shot. Uh, right. Not yet rehearsing, and the show right. was in previews and open. The show had so they started tech, and that's when the cover started our like music rehearsals. We hadn't even touched the stage, um, mm -hmm. we weren't really planning to touch the stage until they 
they were in previews. So we were starting our music rehearsals. And again, I'm focusing on the lesbians from next door, as I was told to do. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, fast forward um, to, I think, the second week of previews. So again, this is like my third week with the show, third mm -hmm. or fourth week. And uh, Stephanie starts to get sick. And, you know, she's going to protect her voice because it's a hard thing. And so she immediately calls out. It was a Friday night. Okay, I'll tell you this, tell you this story. Friday night, Courtney Ballin, who is a dear friend of mine and was actually the one covering Trina, was also sick. So she had a sinus infection. And, you know, I'm backstage like, you know what? You know, we're going to be fine. <laughs> so, um, you know, basically it was a Friday night. She went on and halfway through the show, her voice starts to go. And um, I get a text message on my phone from stage management saying, come downstairs. James Lapine wants to meet you in the back alley. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what a text <laughs> message. <laughs> I don't know. So I, I go, okay. So I go down there and um, he meets me. It's like this little alley attached to the back of the theater. And he comes with like a posse of people and he goes, do you know the score? And I was like, but inside I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is Bill Finn music. So Bill Finn's like pretty tricky. And especially it's, like, it's yeah. wordy. It's all stories. It's, it's like powdery and like weird. Mm -hmm weird right. intervals. So anyway, uh, I was like, yeah, I know the score. I'm not going to tell James if I know. And <laughs> he was like, great, we're going to mic you and you're going to sing from off stage in the, in the stage, manager, stage management's office uh, because Courtney's losing her voice. And I was like, okay. So I grab, actually, I grab Courtney's score because she has it marked up for Trina. Mm -hmm. And I grab my little piano on my cell phone and I start plunking out harmonies. <laughs> And you know, because and then I'm just like, and I'm mic'd up, and I'm, yeah. um, and they were like, "You're, you know," I didn't end up having to sing that night, but um, that was scary. But fast forward to the next day, okay? The next day, I had a haircut planned because opening was only a week away, and I have a lot of hair, and I had a special haircut plan. And my stage manager said, "You know what? Just be careful. You know, we might. It's possible." Just put that in. And I was like, if I cancel my haircut, Courtney's going to be okay. So I'm going to stick with my haircut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I got my haircut and the stage manager goes, if I call you, know that it's you should answer. But if I text you, just you know, text back when you can. So I'm getting my hair shampooed, okay? <laughs> I get a call from my stage manager and I'm like, can I cuss on here? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Pick the phone up and he's like, you're on. And I was like, okay, okay. So she finished up. I'm like, I'm not joking, guys. I grabbed the coffee with wet hair and I oh. ran across from the Upper East Side directly across to the West to West Side to 52nd Street. And uh, no, 50, what's it on? 40? 49? 49. 49. And we show up to the theater and, you know, we have stage management, everybody like costumes. I don't even have costumes, you guys. And oh. uh, two o'clock matinee, and so I come this in. Is, this is that dream that every actor has, correct? Like, except <laughs> uh, this is that dream on crack because this is Broadway, and this is this is Trina. Oh yeah! Okay. Cheers! I'm. <laughs> we're not even there yet, and I'm already we're proud of you. We're not even there yet. Okay. I know. So, uh, oh god, I might need another drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we don't want to give you PTSD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically. Okay, so I get to the theater, we go down to the basement, they start pinning costumes on me, like pinning them, trying to fit me in things. I don't have, they're not even like, they didn't even start that process with me. Right, right. And so I have them doing that. I have stage management going through the top of the show with me. Um, like, okay, then you go here and then you go here. And then I have the music department plunking notes for me. So this, all of this is swirling around. No one's asked how I am today, <laughs> you know? We don't have time for that. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we do all that. So then they're like, okay, we got the costumes. Now we're gonna start at the top of the show. So I go on stage and of course the whole cast shows up. And I, I thought that was like, they didn't have to come. Right. And they all came earlier than they should have on a two show day. 
and um, came and showed their support. You know, Christian Borrell, Andrew Rannells, um, Tracy Tom. Just a, just everybody. a bunch of nobodies. Just a yeah. bunch of like <laughs> fresh nobody. green actors. Oh, so exactly. <laughs> so we just started at the top of the show and we didn't, we didn't even get far. We didn't get, yeah. we got baby through act one, um, rushed. You know, we're just moving from place to place. So, and I have my script. And so um, we were like, okay, well, we, we actually have to start the show now. So I have five minutes to get ready. So I go to the dressing room and I'm actually, this is, this is theater magic right here. My costumes fit like a glove. They, they built those in two hours. That is amazing. Perfectly. Um, so anyway, I, okay, so this is funny. I, I was like in the dressing room and they keep checking on me and we had to hold the curtain like 10 minutes and they were like, how are you? And let me tell you the one thing out of everything, I couldn't get my eyelash on. And that was, <laughs> was going to break me. And I, I'm fine. You know, like that was the eyelash. Was yeah. For some reason, the thing that was the problem. You know, right. well, when, when, when there's chaos around us, it's always like the one thing that we can focus on of like, right. this is the problem. Yeah. This is the problem. <laughs> so I'll get my eyelash on, right? And then we start. We start. And so our, um, our uh, assistant director at the time, he had a brilliant idea that we would, instead of me carrying out the binder, we would staple pages together. And when those pages run out, that means get off stage. So he oh. <laughs> That's brilliant. I actually, I am obsessed with that. That's right? brilliant. So I didn't have to like search. I would just know yeah. hey, either done, go. Yeah. And um, anyway, the rest is a blur. I don't remember anything else. All I remember is moments of, when the page would be in, I'd look stage right. I'd look to the left and there'd be people going, I mean, I don't know if you guys got the chance to see the show, but it was like extremely intricate. Yeah. Well, um, the whole this whole time I'm thinking like, so the whole set is made up of this, what like, Lego Jenker style, block, yeah. But, but like, but more intricate in that like they all kind of, attached to each other and it, that becomes the entire set. Exactly. And when I saw the show, I had already known this story because I had seen it after it had opened and I was like, but like, did they do it without a set? Like, cause how did you know what block to, to move? Ooh, honey, I had Andrew Reynolds. <laughs> and I, like, fully didn't care. I was like, We're gonna, I don't want to kill anyone. That's the, this is the objective. So, you know, I mean, I had people being like, or they, Andrew would, Andrew was just, I, I keep mentioning him because he was like the most just completely there for me. Yeah. And like, I mean, everybody was, but he just would like, if I forgot a block, he was just super aware and he would grab it for me. Just like, That's awesome. amazing, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, who knew Trina and Wizard had such a connection <laughs> in this production? <laughs> Oh, I'm obsessed. Well, fellow Broadway cover extraordinaire Lauren Chapman is sending you some love in the comments. Oh, Sarah, Lauren. Sarah, I also see you popping in. Hey, girl, thanks for popping by. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're here with Stephanie Umo of the Angelica Tour of Hamilton and also of many Broadway uh, wonderful uh, shows. Um, I can't, uh, this falsetto story is even more delicious than I thought it was going to be. I know. This is, I'm loving hearing it from you because I've only read about it. Oh, man. And, <laughs> It was crazy, and that by the end, I, so when we got to I'm Breaking Down, which mm -hmm. you guys, you know, iconic musical theater number, mm -hmm. very prop heavy in that. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with a knife, carrots, bananas, all of it. Yeah. And, a, and a real knife, right? And a real knife. Because I remember, <laughs> I remember her picking up the knife and me being like, aha, yes, a knife. And then she smacks it down and cuts something. And I remember being an audience member going, like, oh, oh that's a that's a real knife. Yeah. So when I did it, okay. Uh oh. The blade of the knife <laughs> comes off of the handle and goes. I mean, it was like slow motion, and we were all looking up, <laughs> and all the boys on the stage were just like, I mean, it was like slow motion, and I was like, please do not hit an audience member. And they, we just fell into the pit. But I was like, I'm breaking down. You know, <laughs> the breaking down was actually real. It yeah. was actually real. Yeah. I just like left the props after that. And I was just like, I'm going to speak to y'all. This is. <laughs> 
Did you ever get to do it again after that weekend? I did it two more times after that. Yeah. Um, that, that weekend I did, I did only the Saturday matinee and after the Saturday matinee, the curtain dropped and, and we come backstage and I start crying. I mean, I guess I just held it in. I don't know what it was just, you know, a flood of emotions. And yeah, Immediately, I'm like, I'm going to get a martini. <laughs> <laughs> and so some people, some of the covers joined me. I mean, between shows, I did. I just yeah. did it because it wasn't going to be on that night. I knew Stephanie was coming back. So right. I got uh, a martini and a burger. And I just... Atta girl. Oh That's a, what a, what a well meal deserved. after that. Well <laughs> deserved. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, you're also the first Black woman to play Trina, right? That's which right. Like, Hashtag. Mm-hmm. which is like so cool and and uh and important and uh yeah that's just awesome yeah you know i it's funny when i was auditioning for the show and i was talking with uh, james lapine and i was like he was like are you jewish and i don't know but actually i i have some close friends of mine who are black and jewish so it's not it, it doesn't it, it exists you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. Um, it's just not as common of course but there are black Jews out there and so it was kind of cool to to represent my best friend in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh for sure. You know what I mean, that um, is that is just so cool. That, yeah. that story, then that it'll never get old. That story. It'll never get old. Also, like that's that's like a one in a million story. Like people don't. I just remember like everybody in all of like when I leave my house, I'm in I'm in Midtown. Like I'm in, and I just remember that week like walking around, and all anybody was talking about is like, yeah. did you hear that Stephanie J. Block and her understudy were sick? And Stephanie Umo went on with pages in hand and, and no rehearsal. And like, it's like, it shook the whole theater community. It was Everybody such... was shook. And yeah. <laughs> every, at that Monday, that following Monday, I was starting rehearsals. I was doing double, double duty and I was starting rehearsals for Into the Woods, which was that um, Fiasco Theater Company's um, yeah. inside, the, inside the piano. Yes. And oh. I was playing Witch. So I literally went, started rehears- a no day off after that and I had to go to rehearsals and start learning Sondheim. And you know, then at that following Wednesday, I went on again for ten minutes. Anyway, it was just Yeah. I was like, what is going on? I know. You're like <laughs> my kingdom for a Rogers and Hammerstein musical. Like anything with <laughs> anything with choruses and rhymes, please. <laughs> Please. Rhymes that aren't like internal rhymes or rhymes that like <laughs> you can like kind of guess her. are the words. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that's my god. Exactly that's right. So funny. That's great. So yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Thank you for letting me relive that with you. Oh guys. my god. Was... Thank you for sharing that. That that story, <laughs> I I'm I this is this I'm is like delicious. sweating from that story. I am <laughs> even me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh. Are we sure about the bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, obsessed. Well, before we go any further, I think we should uh take it's time. a I think it's time. I think we should take a lead it's off time. of your current show, which is going a lot smoother. Uh, well, it's currently <laughs> I I knock on wood, yes. it's a pandemic, but your current show. Okay. Uh and I think we should get into today's game. So today's game uh, is inspired by Angelica Schuyler, who you play in Hamilton, and her mm-hmm. sisters Eliza and Peggy. Our game is and famous Peggy. trios. <laughs> yes. uh, my dream role is to play Peggy, by the way. So fear. Well, we'll see about that. Yeah, uh, never gonna happen. Never yeah, gonna happen. you know you have to belt like a high Z in act two, but we'll see what happens. Well, no, I just want to play Peggy. I don't want to play Mariah. Just uh, Peggy. <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, today's game is famous trios. I'm gonna give you a clue about one of ranker.com's top 40 trios of all time all you have to do is identify the trio and for bonus points you can give me names as well but what we're really looking for is the trio as always uh since i built today's game dylan has not seen it which Mm -hmm. means he is uh, on your team and is there to help you as are everybody in the comments so there's you got you have a whole support system today we're all we're all here for you we're all rooting for you we're all and um this is so for example if i said this trio based on Angelica, Elizabeth, and Margarita, appears on stages across the world in a musical with music, lyrics, and book by Lin-Manuel Miranda, you would say... Skylar Sisters. The Skylar Sisters. Black ding, 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 ding. Yes. Uh, if you get it right, you will hear Alex Newell riffing for you. And if you get it wrong, you will hear something else. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. 
This trio. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. This trio are all in the. Oh, hold on. Let me put up my very fancy. Da, 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 name that trio backdrop. Great. <laughs> now we can play a game. Number one. This trio are all in the same grade at school, although the one girl of the group is proud to be oldest. Together, they have appeared in seven books, eight movies, and two Broadway plays. Can we name? This trio doesn't have a name. It's just three people that we're looking for. Seven books, eight movies, two Broadway plays. Their Broadway plays are currently still running. They are a famous trio, and they are all from the same house. Oh. No, not Little Women. Not Little no. Women. No, no, they're all from the same house. Huh. We're starting, we're starting with a hard one. I think I, I think I have it. Does anybody have it down there? You think you have it? I think I have it. What do you think? What got, what got it for me was they're all from the same house. Oh my gosh. And not like House Targaryen, this but like is, House. Right. This House. is Ranker.com's number one top trio of all time. Yeah. Oh is it is it what I just said? House Hogwarts? Yes. And who are the trio? It's Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Okay. You know what? There it is. Technically, listen, <laughs> you're on the same team. We're so on the same team. That's so one we got for this. one. I'm so thankful that we're on oh, the same and team. Lauren Nicole Lauren Chapman, Batman. also here oh, with you. Lauren, I have um, never seen Harry Potter before. So. Have you read the books? I haven't. I know. Okay, I know. wait, Stephanie. It's fine. I've never read the books either. Hold on. And this is the thing it. I tell Dylan as well. And also, I understand this is a more complex issue currently because the author of the books has also said some really ignorant things lately. Right. We don't need to get into that. But as a standalone entity, especially if you can get the books from someone who will lend them to you so you don't have to give any more money to that lady, mm -hmm. um, they're a fantastic read. I read them as an adult for the first time. I read them in like 2013 or 2014. Uh -huh. And they're a fantastic read. Okay. Um, so highly recommended. And also the plays on Broadway are, are they're incredible. Okay, Anywho, great. Well, I'll do it. Right. You're, one, you're one for one. Uh, here comes your second question. You, you're welcome. I mean, it was only the way he said it the second time that I was like, oh, that wasn't how you meant to say it. Uh, uh -huh. well, listen, I'm giving you, uh, I'm, I'm throwing, I got to throw you a bone when it's, when it's helpful. Let's see. Right. Uh, this trio had children of the 90s Jumpin' Jumpin' when they surprised the world with a reunion on the Super Bowl stage in 2013. They proved without a doubt that they are survivors and they had us all saying their name. Destiny's Child. Yeah, come on, Destiny's Child. What I really want to do for some reason just to start playing, ladies, if you're a man at home. Yeah. <laughs> Not Alex Mule Riffin, but just Destiny's Child. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe next time we can use that as our uh, correct music. All right, you're two for two. No trouble with that Destiny's Child clue. Proud of you. Uh, and we're moving right along. Trio number three. Question number three. This is another uh, trio. This one I had to Google, so good luck. Uh, this <laughs> trio is known for their superpowers. They live with Professor... Utonium in the city of Townsville, and they are on mayor's speed dial should any criminals or other enemies pop up. Oh, and I should mention, they're only in kindergarten. Their names are Blossom, Buttercup, and Bubbles. Can you name the trio? Powerpuff Girls! Hey! Yes, that's the Powerpuff <laughs> Girls, another famous trio. <laughs> All right. I know that one was, I was like a little I, I was so one. scared in the beginning. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, me too. I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, what I time? think we're, we're all around. Oh, Joy got it right. Way to go in the comments. Um, we're all around this. The three of us on the show are all around the same age, I think. And so that was not my childhood. So I wasn't sure, but it wasn't my go. childhood either. But I remember them being like, you know, Blossom, yeah. Bubbles, and Buttercup. Yeah. yeah, kindergarten superheroes. Who knew? <laughs> I, it happened. All 
right, moving right along with our game of famous trios. Again, this is one of Ranker.com's top 40 trios of all time. Okay. This trio has been rocking since 1987 and has sold more than 85 million records worldwide. A Broadway musical was inspired by their music and played 421 performances, a few of those performances featuring Melissa Etheridge. Uh, somebody better wake this trio up when September ends. Huh. Wait, Melissa yeah. Etheridge was in that musical? She sure was. Oh, you towards, know it. The, towards the end, Melissa Etheridge jumped in for the same role. Also, here's another clue. One of the people in this famous trio also came in and stepped into the musical uh, as a ticket sales, ticket sales stunt. And then when that person left, tickets plummeted again, and Melissa Etheridge went in to again sell some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was uh, undoubtedly oh, the why, most. Why are we both keep, keep hitting our computer? I don't know. I'm this drink's delicious. I'm waiting. <laughs> um, this is undoubtedly the musical I have seen with the most eyeliner. So much eyeliner on the girls, on the boys. Someone so in the comments eyeliner. got it. Lauren Chapman, oh! enjoy. Yes, American Idiot. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I'm, in, I'm embarrassed to know that it was American Idiot, but could not remember that the band's name was Green Day. Green so I Day. couldn't say right. that, but I was like. You could have said Green Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you nailed it. We're giving you the point. You, you got yeah. there. <laughs> um, yet another famous trio, Green Day, which apparently was mostly a trio, but occasionally the drummer would like bounce and then they would just be a duo. That's fine. Destiny's Child was mostly oh, okay. a trio, but not always. Yeah, I don't know. All right, here That's we go. True. You are cruising right along in this game, and uh, so far, so good. Here comes your next famous trio. Okay. This band is made up of a trio that are described as, or here, let me say this, this, uh, this animated band okay. is a trio described as the mischievous troublemaker, the tall, bespeckled intellectual, and the chubby, shy one. Their signature sh sig Wow. Cheers. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have the mischievous troublemaker, the tall, bespeckled intellectual, and the chubby, shy one. The band's signature sound was produced by one man recording all three voices and then speeding up the tape to create a high-pitched, squeaky voice. Oh, uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah, that's Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, known as Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, wow. They are a famous trio. Good job, Stephanie. I had no idea what he was talking about. I was yeah. actually the guest, the, 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 not the Pussycat Dolls. Remember those like Josie and the Pussycats. That's who I thought it was at first. Until he said the chubby one, and I was like, well, they were all beautiful. <laughs> they were like Barbie, like, you yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. Uh, so far, so good. Let's see. I see some Alvin and the Chipmunks in the comments. You guys, wait to go. We are about halfway through. If you're just tuning in, Stephanie Mo is taking our quiz about famous trios, uh, because Stephanie, of course, plays Angelica on the Angelica tour uh, of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, so as a famous trio participant yourself, this game was made just for you. Here comes your next famous trio. Let's okay. do, let's do this one. This one's very hard. I'm just going to preface it with that. Okay. Donald Duck's trio of nephews, mm -hmm. AKA great nephews of Scrooge McDuck make up this trio. Typically they're shown in shirts and colorful baseball caps. They are the 11th most published comic book characters in the world. Do we know the name of this trio or the names of this trio? Oh my gosh. It wasn't, there was a cartoon mm -hmm. with a three of them and their uncle. Was that called DuckTales? No. It's, it's not called... DuckTales. Oh. Uh, it's three names. Here's the thing. When I read the name of the trio, I was like, I know this. Why do I know this? And I had to go Google who they were. So the name is really hard. It's there. They are, I'm looking for three names. Uh -huh. and and they rhyme. Okay. And one of them shares a name with 
uh, Chad Kimball's character's name in Memphis, the musical. How about that? Okay. <laughs> John, do you remember the name of that character? I used to work at Memphis, so I do. Okay, what's his name? It's Huey. Huey. So okay. it's Huey, Dewey, Dewey. and Louie. I knew we would get there. All it took was a Broadway <laughs> reference. I literally was like, thank God I used to work there. <laughs> Dewey, Dewey. <laughs> yes. Dewey and Dewey. Lauren Chapman also coming in with the right answer. Well done. Lauren is just on it. She is. All right. <laughs> Who you guys? I get so warm when we play the game because I get so nervous on my end, and I'm not even playing. Okay. I'm hot too in the bourbon. It's just a whole and thing. the bourbon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, your next question. Your next trio, originally introduced in a 2004 movie, this trio has also appeared in a Broadway musical and loves to rock around the Christmas tree. Okay. Say the uh, say it one more time. Originally introduced in a 2004 movie, this trio has also appeared in a Broadway musical and loves to rock around the Christmas tree. Who sings that? <laughs> Dylan! Rocking around the Christmas tree. Oh, wait a minute. That's not right. No, I, I swear. Didn't think so. I swear. I wasn't having a cocktail when I made this game. That's not, they don't love to rock around the Christmas tree. No, they, they don't. love. They love to rock around the Christmas pole, but also uh, they uh, they love to ring them jingle bells. Mean Girls, the plastics. <laughs> yep, you nailed it. I'm sorry. I thought wait. it was rocking around the Christmas tree. <gasps> they no sing wait. They sing that song. Great. Right? Then I was right. No, don't they sing Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock? And they slap their... Right, they sing oh, Jingle Bell Rock. Rock. I well, thought it was, was Rock. What was the 2004 movie? What was the other thing you said? 2004 movie. Did it come out in 2004? I guess. I don't know. That's, yeah. what it said. That's what it said on wikipedia.com. So we're going with that. We're going to go with that. All right. Yeah, perfect. I'm giving you the point. You're nailing. We got it. We got and it. And here comes your next trio. This trio works in a private detective agency based in Los Angeles. The list of its members over the years has included Farrah Fawcett, Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, Kristen Stewart, and Elizabeth Banks. Stephanie, if you will. Oh, uh, okay, Dylan, I'm blanking right now. Oh, I'm, no! I know, I know, um, I know, I know, they do that. Um, <laughs> um, yes, yes! <laughs> I I was we got gonna, there. I was gonna say I was like I was like when this little speaker used to come on and be like hello girls and they'd be like <laughs> hello Charlie hello Charlie Charlie yeah yeah that was one of my favorite movies loved it like I, once those movies came out with Cameron Diaz and Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu I was obsessed I mean the 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 Lucy Cameron Drew movies are classics but I also really liked this this um 2019 remake that a lot of people were not here for. I don't even know that that happened. They did one with um, Elizabeth Banks and uh, I'm blanking on everybody else's name, um, but they did a, a remake with like a bunch of like fierce, powerful women. And okay. it was meant to like kind of help reclaim part of this. Cause I also learned this today when Charlie's Angels came out, it got a lot of flack from critics for relying too much on uh, the sexuality of the female body. Interesting. It was called a, um, I don't remember what they called it, but like the TV show. Oh my God, started. they did. Yeah. And so this uh -huh. one was all about like reclaiming that kind of like, listen, it's our bodies. And if we want them to be sexy or this or that, like that's up to us. Like it was very cool. And I it really liked the movie. Elizabeth Banks, Kristen Stewart, and Naomi Scott. Okay. It was, it was fierce. Highly recommended. My as... body and my Name that musical. The Life. life. Come on. Starring a young Bellamy Young, a.k.a. Melly from Scandal. No. <laughs> Wait, are you yes. serious? Yes. I never that. knew that. Oh, my God. I'm obsessed. Yeah. We did the reunion concert at 54 Below when Scandal was like peak Scandal. And she showed up and I literally went. <laughs> <laughs> like just dead. I was like, no, you're currently running for the Senate. Yeah, like, like in my I've mind, se I've seen you on television. I'm like, I've seen you on television. Yeah. I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you haven't missed one yet. We're rolling into our final three trios. Okay. okay, here it comes. It takes a little magic and a candle 
to transform Dolly Levi, Sister Mary Patrick, and Carrie Bradshaw into this spooktacular trio? Um, the sisters. We fly. Um, <laughs> um, the Sanderson sisters. Yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. That would be Winifred, Mary, and Sarah, the Sanderson sisters. How from... dare you use those? I was like, what do these three people have in common? No. But Dylan, we don't need to remember remembering Sanderson sisters. I mean, yes. Uh, well, I am a big fan of the movie Hocus Pocus. So. Okay, okay. It's a good movie. It's so good. It's so good. All right, you guys. I see you in the comments. You're all nailing it. And we've got two left to go. I've got, which one do I want to end on? Let's do this one next. Okay. This one's one of my favorite ones, but it's very hard. So sorry about it. Sorry about your nuggets. Here we go. <laughs> this trio's names are an onomatopoeia mm -hmm. for what their product is does in a bowl of milk. <laughs> oh! Snap, crackle, pop! Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I'm so proud. I was so nervous you about that one. You killed me on that one. I literally was like, huh? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah, snap, crackle, and pop. Yeah, snap, crackle, and pop. And pop. Oh my god, nail. That was so fast. I was so that one stumped me when I was making this. <laughs> Way to go. No, that was great. I like that. Keep Good. going. Keep going. I like these. Thank Here's you. I, love it. I have some bonus ones that I'll tell you when we're off the air because we've been going for a hundred years. But here comes the last one of the official of the official round for okay. the win. This trio was originally a quad. They were formed in Detroit, Michigan, uh, as a sister group to what would become The Temptations. Barbara Martin left the group in 1962 and the group found their signature trio sound. They went on to be named America's most successful vocal group by Billboard. The Supremes. Yes! Um, I was wondering, I was like, when are they gonna name this? When are they gonna <laughs> like the most iconic right. trio? Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, there it was. I got to save the best for last. Yeah. Um, this has been Name That Famous Trio. Uh, and Stephanie Umo, special guest of the day, I'm going to say you nailed that. You're nailed it. a winner. Nailed it. You're a winner, baby. With Dylan's help, of course, and our, our lovely audience. There yes. Um, well done. All that right, was, all right. That was fun, Michael. That was a good, I really enjoyed that game. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Well, you're so talented. <laughs> uh, listen, me, you're, listen, you're Stephanie Umo. Let's, let's not get our wires crossed. Uh, Stephanie, we've been asking everybody uh, these two questions after the game. Uh, and so here they come. Take a crack at these. Okay. Question one, uh, and I know that we've already covered some of this, but bear with me here. Uh, uh -huh. Question one is, uh, given, you know, what the world is going through, uh, what is something that has brought you joy or kept you going during quarantine? Hmm. Jigsaw puzzles. Yes. Okay. I love that. Randomly, jigsaw puzzles. I've just, I don't know. I get this like crazy focus and I can forget about everything. I'm just like, I get obsessed and I finish them in two days, like thousand piece puzzles. It's crazy. What's mm -hmm. your, um, what's your favorite puzzle you've, you've finished? Um, there was this, Okay, a puzzle before the last one. It was like basically like this classic American scene of like, you know, a, a, a lake and house and a car, you know, just like a, a beautiful yeah, yeah. lake front kind of uh, jigsaw puzzle. It was hard as hell, but I, I did it. How, How many pieces you? was it? How many pieces was thousand it? Thousand pieces. Oh, but it was very, it was actually very hard. I mean, it was like, one of the hardest ones I've ever done. But. Well, when you're doing such like a landscape, like so many things really go together that like you need to like- Totally, yeah. Plan it out. You need to plan it out. Well, you know what I mean? I do, yeah. I do. Wild. <laughs> um, all right, all right. And then, you know, not that we want to rush through kind of the healing and the change that the world is dealing with right now. And also not that we want to rush back to normal before it is safe mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but if and when, not if, but when, uh, the world starts to return to a sense of normalcy. What is something you're looking forward to? Um, that's a good question. That's a very good question. I'm actually, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to um, gathering in a group 
larger than two or three. Yeah. Um, you know, even I, even though I'm like actually a pretty, um, you know, reserved person, I guess I, I don't really like to be with crowds, but I, I really miss being in the middle of a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, what I, I, mean? Like just, I get it. I and get just it. absorbing people's energy and just like, I don't know. I miss people watching. I just miss all of that. I miss. Yeah humans and so i can't wait to kind of be find myself in the middle of a group of humans not protesting do you know what i mean right right right, right. yes in, in a happy situation mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 love yeah. that so that's pretty much and then also going back to work of course i actually cannot wait to perform again dying yeah. for it actually well, mm. I'm sure you are not the only one. I uh, I am dying for you to get back to performing so that I can come see the Hamilton tour. Yes, I know. I know, you guys. You have. I will. I'm gonna keep you to that. Oh, girl, you, I am there. I am. I, sign me up. Great. I I put it on my list of things to do after quarantine, which is not that long, that much of a long list than I thought it was going to be oh, when I started it in March. You've never seen the show. No, I've seen the show. I saw and my my boyfriend Chris has not seen the show and saw. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing. Uh, when I was watching the show, it was because I have seen it. I've seen it twice here on Broadway, and um, when I was watching the movie, uh, and you all obviously are familiar with the show, so let me know what you think. But when I was watching the movie, it took me like five or six minutes to adjust because I'm so used to these gorgeous, beautiful stage pictures the way that I already know them, which yeah. is this picture, this, and it's like, and when the camera work started to uh, like layer on top of that and almost be a new creative eye in the room. My like gut reaction for just the first few minutes was like, like, how dare you? No, don't, don't mess with this. And that's not the way I've seen it. Like, yes. and then, you know, by the end of like the first second number, it, I was so with it a hundred percent, but it was so interesting to watch Christopher who has never seen it live was watching it and that kind of proximity and that kind of like the camera coming in mm -hmm. made him made him really want to go see it live. Sure. Which was super, I was like, that's an awesome reaction to have that you're like, A, I'm loving this and B, it makes me want to go see live theater. It was like so that's, cool. That's a great, that's great to hear because obviously the worry is sometimes that you yeah. have limited access to theater on camera or on your TV is, might hurt our hurt our chances of you know coming yeah. back strongly. Right, right. But uh, that's great to hear that there are people that are actually like you know, it's just like kind of wetting their appetite, I guess, and they're wanting to yeah you know actually see it. I really love that. Um, I thought the camera work was really great, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm I'm with you, Michael. I was the same way. I was like you know, and I, I thought it was interesting too because what we're seeing the show through. The camera's perspective, mm -hmm. which we usually, if you're watching the show, it's from the audience's perspective. Yeah. So I, I hope that it does like encourage people to go back and see it for themselves and like get to yeah. watch what they want to watch and what they think is important to mm -hmm. watch. Totally. And as and as someone as someone who has seen it live, if you're watching and you have not seen it live but you're enjoying the movie, go see it live because it will just it's 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 weird to think of it this way but it's kind of what i was thinking when i was watching it last night it's like it almost feels even though it's the exact same show it mm -hmm. almost feels like a companion piece mm -hmm. and like getting to watch that filmed version will enhance your ability to watch and appreciate it live so um but also as someone who has seen it live the filmed version was like a very cool sidecar to that mm -hmm. but yeah absolutely and then also if you're out there and you're and you're gonna you know you're gonna see it live don't Base everything off of one recorded version because theater is a living, breathing thing, and right. we all contribute to things in our own way, and it's going to be different. And I yeah, exciting. and yeah. there is nothing more in my mind after watching um, watching Hamilton on Friday was was I there's I just can't wait to like sit in the theater again oh. and it just be completely dark and just like one of those. I mean, Hamilton has hundreds of these moments but like that moment when uh it's like uh when the world went upside down and everyone's like doing those chairs in the air and like everyone's just standing up strong and like just like singing directly to the audience and, like in like that moment is the moment that like the first time i saw hamilton i was like oh yeah oh, you know what I mean? and like but it, and you can watch it and you're like that's great but there's nothing like being in the theater 
and seeing that and everyone and you're like yeah well and i also think there's gonna be this, this there's is, this gonna is brilliant. be people who like whether or not they realize that this is what they're thinking like there's gonna be people who give credit to the filming of it mm. which is which is so well done and like bravo to the people who filmed it but like it's like the film isn't doing any tricks. Like there's no magic and there's no tricks. It's just a clever way of capturing what the company has actually achieved. Okay. And so like when you go to watch it live, there are moments that you're like, like what? How did they do that? Like there's there's like I remember there's one moment that I watched that I was like, there are no wires? Like what's happening? <laughs> like so yeah, it's just it's, very cool. Getting there's nothing quite like watching it live from start to finish. Well, there's nothing just like live theater. Yeah, oh, I, and, I and love it. I love it so much. And it's it's amazing that it took this long of a time for me without it to like really go back and be like, God, I re like I re I missed it, but now I really miss it, and I cannot Ooh. wait for it to be back because it will be back. It will be and back. It's gonna be back stronger than ever, and I can't Absolutely. wait to I see Stephanie wait. as Angelica. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. We're going. We're, we're going. I cannot wait. Um, Stephanie, you are just a delight. Um, it's so nice to see you. Yes. It's been a minute. It has. Dylan. It has been so, so long. And we'll be back to normal one day and we'll run into each other on Ninth Ave again and we'll go mm -hmm. and jump in and have a, a cocktail together face to face. It'll be great. Right. And then, and then we'll go and, and then, you know, we'll go and see your next Broadway show or your next yeah. tour or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the world is, is really crazy right now. And so uh, Dylan and I really want to thank you for uh, taking some time to hang out with us today and for yeah. giving us your, your signature uh, Manhattan recipe, which I have not even finished because it's hitting me. It's hitting me fast. I think I need another. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh my well, God, I love you. As we stay fine. here, we are now into overtime. Okay. Happy hour is over. Your drink is now full price. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens after after 6.30. Wow. Yeah. That's what happens after 6.30. Uh, well, we love you so, so, so much. Um, yes, it's so nice to hear you from so you. I'm glad, I'm glad you are well. I'm wishing uh, you a, a, a soon and safe return to the road uh, so that many more people can, can see you do your thing. And uh, thank you for joining us. We love you so much. Thank you, guys. Yes. I love you both so much. Thank you. And we'll, we'll see each other again soon. Thank you. We yes, will. we will. Okay, bye. Bye, my dear. Bye, oh my goodness, Dylan! I know you were very excited. Was Ooh. it everything you hoped for and more? Of course, I'm of obsessed course. With her. I am just obsessed with her. Um, <laughs> if you are just tuning in, you're, you're late. late. Uh, you missed our very special guest today with Stephanie Umo from the touring company of Hamilton, mm -hmm. um, and also from a bunch of Broadway shows, and also just a delight, and also a savant when it comes to naming trios. Who Apparently. knew? Apparently. Um, apparently she's just the best. Uh, and that was, this was a fun one. This is great. This was wonderful as it always is. Um, if you are, ah, uh, we have to talk about something before we sign off. We have a few things to talk about, which is yes, upcoming things for you to do. Upcoming fun things that we just like found out recently about. Uh, Shoshana Bean and friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. Shoshana Bean, who we love, uh, has an upcoming concert. Dylan, tell us about it. It is next Monday night. Um, I'm double checking the time because I've forgotten it since we've started this <laughs> moment of a show. Um, but yeah, it's a Shoshana Bean and Friends show that you can watch online. And I'm not on Shoshana Bean. Her Bean's handle is at yet. Show Bean, S H O B E A N. At Show Bean, yes. But it's it'll be on her YouTube channel, um, which is youtube.com slash Shoshana Bean. It is a virtual benefit concert for BHS Performing Arts, which is a place that she. Um, works with a bunch um, and that is uh, Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time but of course 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 9 p.m. Eastern yes. Standard Time I don't know what that is um, great and then uh, Bernadette Peters Bernadette Peters uh, is uh, doing uh, uh, <laughs> that was concert. Michael's Bernadette Thank Peters you. moment I love her. I love her so is much. doing a concert this Friday and by is doing I mean it's a recorded concert from Oof, when was that concert? Like five, five or five or six years ago, I want to say. Um, and it'll be on Friday on Broadway. And all proceeds uh, go to uh, Broadway Cares. And you can do that uh, on Broadway Cares' Instagram, no, Facebook and YouTube. 
Also follow them both on Twitter because Broadway Karis has been has been tweeting some really great uh, Bernadette Peters material and Bernadette has been responding to it. <laughs> and it is it's a follow that is worth it. Um, the last thing we want yes. to talk about is not a happy thing to talk about. No. Um, but I'm sure as uh, many of you uh, in the community already know, and if you don't, if you're not in the Broadway community, um, you you're, you should still know, um, is that the Broadway community lost a really bright, shining star to COVID this past week. His name is Nick Cordero. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was in uh, Rock of Ages. He was in um, Bronx Tale. Bronx Tale. He was just a favorite. Almost over Broadway. Yeah, he was a favorite of many, many, many people in the community. Uh, I only got to meet him once, but anyone you talk to who worked with him uh, has beautiful things to say. Unfortunately, he lost a battle to Mm COVID-19 this week, uh, which uh, was a hard-fought battle, uh, but unfortunately ended with uh, him passing. He was in the hospital for 95 days, I want to say. It was a long time. It was was a long battle and struggle. His family uh, is, has started a GoFundMe, which is nearing almost a million dollars, I yeah. think. Uh, and if you can, please, please, please. His wife's name is is Amanda Klutz, uh, K-L-O-O-T-S. She also has, um, she's also on, on Instagram. You should follow her as well. But uh, please go seek that out. It is a GoFundMe for Nick Cordero and his wife, Amanda Klutz, and their, uh, their child, Elvis. Uh, they are raising money, uh, and if you can, if you have the means to do so, please go and donate. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 that. That's it. That's all we have for you today. We are back tomorrow at five thirty, mm-hmm. uh, as always, and tomorrow is going to be a fun one as well. Tomorrow, you guys, tomorrow's guest is an actor, a musician. He is one of I can't even believe I'm going to say this. I'm 31 years old. He's one of my favorite TikTok people tiktokers <laughs> tiktok mm-hmm. accounts um he appeared off broadway where he originated the roles of jim halpert and andy bernard in the office a musical parody uh but he's also been turning out some fantastic uh content for his wildly popular youtube channel since we've all been in lockdown um the internet is obsessed with his put on a mask uh music video and he's got a new album that just dropped uh, tomorrow, our guest is Tom McGovern, and we're so I'm so excited to catch up with him. Those of Same. you who are here in New York may know Tom as uh, the uh, one of the piano players at Haswell Greens, who plays with Imperial Cities. Uh, he's unbelievable, and he's a professional funny person. And, and so tomorrow. funny, so get ready for some laughs. He might be the funniest person I know, and I don't even know him, so it's going to be great. <laughs> Oh, Michael. Um, You guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. We love you all. Uh, As always, please wash your hands, wear a mask. uh, And stay safe. Just spend some time home. It's not going to be nice in New York this week. So just embrace your Do it to it. And if you get bored, we'll be here tomorrow at 530. We're here for you. Yes. That's all. We love you guys.